1.1.1 we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equals to 0. So now the question I ask myself is which two numbers do I multiply and they give me minus 15 but when I add them they give me 2. Clearly that is minus 3 and 5 right. So as the result I'm gonna have x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 3 is equals to 0. So x plus 5 is equals to 0 or x minus 3 is equals to 0. So x is equals to minus 5 or x is equals to 3. And then now we can move ahead and do 1.1.2 which says 5x squared minus x minus 9 is equals to 0. Leave your answer correct to two decimal places. As soon as I see an equation that has a coefficient here of x squared not being 1, I know I'm going to use the conducting formula. Whether the question asks me uh, to leave it in two decimal places or not, I'm just going to use the quadratic formula because I don't want to uh, give myself problems. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say x equals to minus b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So what is minus b? We know clear fully well that minus b uh, will be minus 1, right? So as a result, we're going to have plus 1 here, plus or minus uh, b squared. So we have in minus 1 squared, so it will just be 1. Minus 4 multiplied by 5 multiplied by minus 9 divided everything divided by 2a, right? Oh, again, um, a is uh, 5, right? So I'm going to have 5 here instead, which will just give us 10. So we're going to have x equals to 1 uh, plus or minus. Let me put all that which is inside the square root in my calculator, right? So I have 1 minus 4 multiplied by 5 multiplied by minus 9. So that is giving me 181 divided by 10. So now I can tell that x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 181 divided by 10 or x is equal to 1 minus the square root of 181 divided by 10. So x will be equal to, again, just run into my calculator and putting it in, I'm getting 1.4454 or x uh, being equal to minus 1.2454 and then you get your max. And now 1.1.3 says uh, x squared is less or equals to 3x. So I'm going to um, subtract 3x from both sides and then I'm going to get x squared minus 3x is less or equals to 0, right? So now I want my critical uh, values, right? So I'm going to say x squared minus 3x is equals to 0. So if I pull out x, I get x minus 3 is equals to 0. So x equals to 0 or x equals to 3. So now when I have these two critical values, there's only two possible solutions, right? Uh, one solution is that uh, x is greater than 3 uh, and x is less than zero. That's the first possible solution. The other solution is that uh, x is between uh, zero and three. So how do I know which one between these two is the correct one? I take a number uh, in this range uh, between zero and three, right? If it satisfies uh, this equation here that we are solving, then uh, that solution will be correct. So for instance, between 0 and 3, I have 2, right? So let me just take 2. So if I plug in 2 here, I'm going to get uh, 2 squared, right? Uh, which will be uh, 4, uh, which is supposed to be 
less or equals to 3 multiplied by 2 is 6 so this is correct so as soon as this is correct uh, we know that this is our right solution uh, this one is wrong and yeah so we can move forward so we have 1.2 uh, and then 1.2.1 we're solving for a and we're given uh, a plus 64 divided by a equals to 16 so i don't like dealing with fractions they're so complicated so i'm just gonna multiply everything with a right so i'm gonna get a squared plus 64 a uh, equals to 16 a so if i take 16 a um actually this is just supposed to be 64 and not 64a because it's been divided by a my bad so we're gonna have a squared um minus 16a plus 64 equals to zero so now i have to factorize this right uh which two numbers do i multiply i get 64 but when i add i get minus 16 that's minus 8 and minus 8 so i'm gonna get a minus 8 multiply by a minus 8 equals to 0 so a equals to 8 basically because i'll be repeating myself if i say or a equals to 8 again so a is just equals to 8 and then uh we have 1.2.2 that says hence solve for x if 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of 6 minus x equals to 16 so here um because it says hands i'm looking at 1.2.1 and trying to apply the same idea i use like what are the similarities between 1.2.1 and 1.2.2 right uh, obviously you can solve it independently of 1.2.1 but i think it will be more challenging uh, compared to if you just um, apply the same ideas from 1.2.1 so what i realized here in 1.2.2 is that i can write it the same way i wrote 1.2.1 uh, so i can let a basically be uh, 2x right so if i let a be 2x you will realize that uh, we'll have uh, 2x plus 2 to the power of 6 divided by 2x equals to 16 right and then if you solve this if you solve this and you make it linear right this is what you get so these two things are equal so we can now solve from here but then from 1.2.1 uh, we know that if this is a uh, if this term here is a and this term here is a then a is supposed to be um 8 because 2 to the power of 6 is the same as uh, 64 right so now we can say that uh, 2 to the power of x is equals to 8 because when we have these and in place of 2x we have a a is supposed to be equals to 8 right so we're gonna say 2 to the power of x is equals to 8 right so 2 to the power of x is equals to 2 to the power of 3 because now if we write 8 with the base of 2 we're gonna be able to drop the base and equate the exponents right so from here we can see that x is equals to 3 and then we have solved the 1.2.2 and then we have 1.3 which says um we thought using a calculator calculate the value of and we have yeah this expression here yeah, that looks scary so one thing i'm not gonna do is not use a calculator when a question comes and then it says don't use the calculator and it's like this i'm gonna use a calculator so that i can see what the answer is supposed to be like so yeah when i use the calculator i get four right so i know that my answer is supposed to be four so now i can sort of solve the equation but i already have a heads on i know what i'm supposed to get right so i'm gonna say um let me just write this expression so we have two to the power uh 1002 plus 2 to the power 1006 uh, divided by 17 multiplied by 2 to the power uh, 998 so here um i'm trying to simplify it right i'm trying to get rid of the big numbers so the first thing i realized when i look at this problem is that if i can take out 2 to the power of 998 on this term and this term as a common factor then i can add 
I can cancel it with this 2 to the power of 998 in the denominator, denominator right? So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this will be equals to uh, the square root of 2 to the power of 998. So I'm taking it as a common factor, right? Or on the exponent. So here I'm going to have uh, f from 2 to the power 1002, if we take 2 to the power 998, we get 2 to the power 4, right? Uh, plus and then 2 to the power uh, 1006 that will be 2 to the power of 8 so we're gonna get 2 to the power of 8 uh, divided by 17 multiplied by 2 to the power 998 so 998 2 to the power 998 and then they're gone so now all I have is just um, let me write it down I have 2 to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of 8 divided by 17 right and then i know that in the back of my head that this is supposed to give me four but then 17 is a prime number right it's only divisible by itself and one so there isn't much you can do to 17 so we're just gonna we know now because we have 17 and we cannot do much to it we know that in the denominator after we take the square root right uh, we're supposed to have four multiply by the square root of 17 so that the square root of 17 in the denominator will cancel with the square root of the of 17 in the numerator and we're left with 4 so uh, let's see what we have so we have the square root right so 2 to the 4 is 16 right and then 2 to the 8 is 256 right divided by 17 so this will be equals to uh, 272 divided by 17. So now because I, now I'm probably I'm, I'm basically uh, cheating. Now I'm going to say this is equals to 4 uh, multiplied by the square root of 17 divided by the square root of 17. So the square root of 17 will cancel out with the square root of 17 and I'm just going to be left with 4. And then yeah we're done. And then now for 1.4 we have 2x minus y equals to 2 and uh, 1 divided by x minus 3y equals to 1 and we're supposed to solve simultaneously right so this one here looks uh, pretty much uh, simple compared to the other one so we're gonna start with this one so we're gonna have um, 2 uh, so we're gonna so we're going to have minus y equals to 2 minus 2x. So we're going to have y equals to 2x minus 2. And then uh, we can then sub in uh, 2x minus 2 on this expression here, right? Uh, <coughs> on this equation, it's not an expression, it's an equation. So we're going to have 1 divided by x minus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 2 equals to 1. So I'm going to have 1 divided by x uh, minus 6x plus 6 equals to 1. So I'm going to multiply everything with x because I don't like dealing with fractions, right? So I'm going to get 1 minus 6x squared plus 6x equals to x. So I'm going to have minus 6x squared plus 5x, right? plus 1 equals to 0. So I'm going to multiply everything with minus 1 so that I can get uh, 6x squared minus 5x minus 1 equals to 0. I'm multiplying everything with minus 1 because I'm just not used to solving for x when I have a minus on the coefficient of x squared. So if I can get rid of it, I'll get rid of it and make my life easier. So here I'm going to have um, 6x multiplied by x uh, is equal to zero, right? Uh, this is a bit uh, more tricky. Usually, I'd advise people to use the quadratic formula, but then I can try like raising it out, right? Because the only factors of one is one and one, right? So you need to put plus one somewhere and minus one somewhere, and then you put them in a way that uh, the middle term will be minus five. So if I put uh, minus one here, then let's say I put minus one here. Then 6x and minus 1 will be minus 6x and then plus x it will be minus 5x, right? So that sort of uh, satisfies what I'm looking for.
So here I'm gonna have plus one. So six x plus one equals to zero or x minus one equals to zero. So x equals to minus one divided by six or x equals to one. So when x is equals to minus one divided by six, uh, what is the corresponding value of four, right? So now we can come to this uh, equation here and substitute uh, minus one divided by six in place of x, right? So when I have two multiplied by minus one divided by six, uh, minus two, uh, which is giving me y equals to minus seven uh, divided by three, right? So here I have minus seven divided by three, or we have our y being equals to. Now I'm just putting one. So two by one, that's two minus two, that's zero, right? So I have zero here.